Hello, this is Darren. And this is Paige. And this is Where's Where's the the Lemonade? Lemonade? Where we talk about what happens when life throws you lemons. Make some lemonade? Uh, Maybe. Some weeks it's lemon squares. Yeah, some weeks it's just lemons. Yeah. (laughs) On today's episode, we're going to talk about Valentine's Day expectations versus reality. Reality. All right, today's a wonderful day because we are doing our Valentine's Day podcast. I know you've all been waiting for this to see how we do Valentine's Day. I think you'll be shocked. (laughs) Really? You think people will be shocked? I think they would be shocked. Okay. Well, we'll we'll find out. They'll have to wait and see in a few more minutes, right? Exactly. Yeah. So let's first talk about, I always like to talk about the history of things. And this time you looked it up. I did. It's, I mean, I think most people know that Valentine's Day is based on the saint, Valentine. Um, and yeah, I mean, I could go on and on, but basically it was a saint that. Wasn't um, he in prison or something? He was in prison, then he ended up being killed. Like, it's actually a, just a terrible story. But he wrote letters from prison to yes. his loved ones. Yep. That's exactly what it was. And it started this kind of note thing taking off. And yeah, notes were a big deal um, that you, you know, you wrote your feelings down and you gave them to people. Which at the time, and even today, people don't really express their feelings towards each other, so they used to do it in notes. Yep. Yep. So then, you know, fast forward a couple of hundred thousand years, (laughs) and um, yeah, and then, you know, they started making cards in bulk to make it easier for people to share their feelings. Who who was it? It was some lady, right, in the 1800s Uh that created the first Valentine's Day card. Right. Where she mass printed things yep. um, to give out um, yep. and sell, and she made a boatload of money. Yep. And then, you know, lo and behold, Hallmark was born. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it is the second card sending holiday. That makes sense. So Christmas is the number one holiday to send cards, and Valentine's Day is the second right behind it. Right, and when you look at the numbers, they're staggering. Oh, yeah. Um, $18.2 billion are spent for Valentine's Day. Yes. That's cards, chocolate, and flowers, primarily, and jewelry. Jewelry, Um, yeah, and whatever. But yeah, it's a a, a $18 billion day. It's not like a haul. It's not like a season. No, it's a day. Like Christmas is a season, right? No. This is a day. Yeah, they say that 54% of the people will participate in Valentine's Day in some way, shape, or form. Right. 190 million cards, Valentine's Day cards. Crazy. And 250 million roses, almost as many as there are people in the United States. And that's just in the United States. That's crazy. And you're going to pay 10 times as much on Valentine's Day for your roses. (laughs) For your roses. And then we also looked up, the most wanted gifts for women. Now, this is where you and I had some discussion. We did have some discussion. Um, but what we, we, I read this one article that said that women want, they want big gestures. Big loving gestures. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah, they don't want a big unloving gesture. Well, no, of course not. <laughs> but you guys are stuck. It can't just be a big gesture. It has to be a romantic gesture. Well, in the article that we were reading, which we have the link on here, it was saying that most women say to their significant other, oh, no, no, I don't need anything. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Don't get me anything. I don't need to, you know, you don't need to, you know, buy into this holiday of this one day of making me feel special. You make me feel special all the time. Yeah, that's a bold-faced lie for all you men out there. (laughs) I'm just telling you, I thought that was the case until... Until last night. Last night when we started reviewing the, for this podcast. And I went, oh, you feel that way too? And she goes, yeah, I kind well, I of was, I was. I was reading this article and this lady nailed it. She said that women say they don't want it. Like, I'm fine. It's no big deal. You don't need to worry about it. But deep down inside, you're still hoping that your man will do something for you. And so you said, do you feel that way? And I went, yeah, I do. Yeah, shocking. Because <laughs> I thought we already put this holiday to bed. But obviously I didn't, so. 
for all you I guys think, out there thinking, you know, you're going to hear this podcast two days before Valentine's Day, we'll have some suggestions at the end for you. Um, it may be too late for you already. You'll, <laughs> you may have to do it next year. But as I said, my expectations have been lowered, right? I have. I've lowered my expectations so that I'm not. And exactly that's, what a man wants to hear. <laughs> my expectations have been lowered because of you. But that's what that lady, that's what the article said too, that we've lowered our expectations so that we don't get our feelings hurt when nothing happens. And we're just like, oh no, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. But deep down inside, of course we want our guy to do something great. Of course we do. And it doesn't mean something from the 7-Eleven or the convenience store on your way home from no, work. No, that would almost be more insulting. I, yeah, I know. Right? It I'm would not. be more insulting. So, um, so let's talk about what women typically want. And this is through surveys throughout the United States. A card, for sure. You have to have a card. have to have a card. And it has to have something handwritten inside besides love, your husband. Mm -hmm. Flowers are always great. Chocolate and jewelry. Those are the four things that they said that women appreciate the most on those days. And they have to be in some kind of a big, loving, romantic gesture. So go figure that one out. <laughs> now, you know me. I'm not a jewelry person. You're not. So, so you are off the hook for that. Off the hook. No, it's 100%. just 100%. I'm not just, just, I'm just, not just limited how much I can actually go do. I'm not just pretending. That I don't want jewelry. I really don't want I jewelry. Don't. <laughs> and I wouldn't get you jewelry because you just leave it around and lose it. So, so yes. all right. So I went from four things down to three. So I have, yeah. li I have limited choices now. Limited choices. It's just awful. <laughs> so men, what do men want? And this was through that survey. This was, and this is according to you as no. well. Yes. According to me as well. Yeah. Because yeah, you said men want sex. And maybe some chocolate. And maybe some chocolate, but mostly. Yeah, sex. and it was funny because one of the articles we read says, oh no, men want uh, to watch a football game. Or I'm like, you, this is a woman talking. <laughs> and it was a woman that wrote it the article. It was a woman that wrote the article. <laughs> men just want to be left alone. I'm like, uh, yeah, they want some. Of. They want some quiet time. They want to watch a time, show. Cook yeah. them some dinner. You say no. Yeah, no. Yeah. And well, there was one thing that she did bring out, which we'll talk about more later. They want a stress-free day, which we'll talk more about later. Yes. Okay, so let's talk about expectations versus reality. Okay, so you already kind of hinted towards this. Yes. You have continually decreased your expectations every year. <laughs> and I'm doing my best <laughs> to help her decrease those expectations. Thanks, babe. Right? Because I don't so want sweet. her to be disappointed I know. in me. So they're just, the expectations are in the gutter, man. Yeah, they're totally in the gutter versus reality. Well, but okay. let's first talk about the first Valentine's Day. Yeah. I, I did something very romantic. You did. You set the expectation high. Way too high. You did. So I came home. I, I don't, I, maybe I was just out picking up kids. I don't remember. But um, I came home and you had, you'd actually rented a helium tank. Do you know how hard it was to find helium tanks? Because there was a <laughs> shortage of helium throughout the nation. But I found a helium tank. And you had? 150 red balloons. Uh -huh. And in some of those balloons, you All had. All the balloons had helium in them. No, I know. But in some of the balloons you had put little pieces of paper that spelled something out and a little message for me. Yep. I pulled yep. out the old high school, ask someone to a prom trick. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what I did. Very yes. romantic. It was very romantic. It was, it was a surprise. Yeah. I came home and there's just balloons everywhere. And it was in our bedroom. They were in the hallway and in our bedroom. And I mean, just so many balloons everywhere. It was great. Somewhere on the floor, somewhere. Yeah. You had lots of balloons on the floor, on the ceiling, yeah. everywhere. So. Then, in order for me to get the notes out, I had to pop them, right? So, she decided to give a long pokey stick to a teenage boy. Well, a lot of the balloons that had notes in them were on the ceiling in our bedroom, and our bedroom has vaulted ceilings. Yep. So, I was trying to pop them. I think... Okay, can you see a disaster <laughs> happening here? I can. I was trying to pop some, and I think you were downstairs doing dinner or something. I don't remember. 
And yeah, Jake came upstairs, who was what, 16? 16. Or maybe almost 17 at the time. Yep. And uh, I was like, hey, Jake, help me, help me, you know, get some of these balloons. So he was taking the stick and, and jabbing it at the ceiling. And right through the ceiling. And yes, it went, the big, stick went. Big hole in the ceiling. Big, big hole. Big hole. Yeah. And, it wasn't very romantic after that because I kind of lost my cool. You did, which then I was upset about. That you You're freaked. upset at me for getting upset at yes. Jake for putting a hole in the ceiling. Yeah, because I was like, he didn't mean to. This was an accident. He was helping me. And you were upset. So yeah, it, it actually was a bust. It like was the a rest of the night was a bust. huge so, bust. So from that point on, I decided, <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing big gestures anymore. Because you're punishing me? No, because... Because why? It ended we, up we, never, we never got around to this. Because no, why? Did. Because it just failed. No, it did not. It did not fail in any way. Oh, it, it sure did. It did not fail. The The gesture did not fail. Someone's attitude. See, so, there we go. Got in the way. <laughs> Someone's bad attitude got in the way. So that was the, the last gesture, time I did that, The gesture by the way. was still extremely appreciated, and I thought it was great. But it did not overcome how angry I was about, or how angry you were at me for being angry about the hole in the ceiling. Yes, let's just say that the thing that we said in the last section about what men wanted did not happen that no, night. No, it did not. <laughs> No, it didn't. Now, we didn't just stop with the first one. The second Valentine's Day, we were actually traveling in Utah. Okay. And um, it was on Valentine's Day that we were traveling. I did not get you a card, which is something that you have told me you always want a card. It's important to me. And I did not get a card because we were traveling all day, and I didn't do it before we left. Uh-huh. Because there's no... Places you can get a card. Yeah, I did get a card later that <laughs> night at the gas station. They don't have do the best you, cards. Do you see where this is going? <laughs> so we fail miserably at, um, at Valentine's Day, but let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. There's an inequality in Valentine's Day. I agree. Major inequality. Yes. Women expect men in general, women expect their men, their their boyfriend, their husband, to do something for them on that day. I would say that is a generalization, but yes. Yeah, and it, which I find very fascinating because when you look at the purchases of Valentine's Day cards, 80% of the cards that are purchased are purchased by women. Right, and I think so that's... this is like... I think that's because, you know, women buy them for their children and, you know... And men so, aren't buying them for that. So do you think it's that women are, are celebrating Valentine's Day with their kids and hoping that their husband gives them something? Absolutely. Where it's not, Valentine's Day is really not about the wife giving something to the husband. It's about the husband giving something to the wife and the wife giving stuff to the kids. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that that is probably, in general, that's probably true. So that's why it's such a rough holiday for men. And I think... That's why in that one article they said men just want a stress free a stress free day no, where no. whatever they've given their wife is good enough. Yes, that's what it said. It actually said that men just want to get through this day without without upsetting anyone, without you know, without you know, oh, hopefully I got her a good enough gift that she's not going to be mad. Hopefully I did well enough at dinner that she's not like seriously, that's what it said men wanted was just to get through the day unscathed. Yeah, isn't that awful? Yeah, that is. This is a horrible holiday. It I think is. we should cancel it. But wait. <laughs> Do you, okay, let me just ask you this. Because we talked about this last night. And I said, maybe it's just an attitude shift that needs to happen. Because... I think in several respects. Do you feel, this, do you feel like this about Mother's Day? Like no. that Mother's Day should be canceled? No, I don't feel that because way Because it's too Mother's much Day. pressure? No, Mother's Day is easy because I know it's all focused on you. Well, why can't you just make the shift and have Valentine's Day be focused about me? Because every day is focused on you, baby. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's a what small about, attitude change. What about me? <laughs> small so, shift, Aaron. A small all right, shift. Expectations versus reality. So for all you guys out there with expectations that Valentine's Day has anything to do with you at it all. It doesn't. It does not. No, the reality just, is. Just throw it out the window. Just do whatever you can to make your wife or your significant other, your as happy as possible. 
Yep, just get Dude, through, just get through the day, get through boys. The day. Get through the day. Just just <laughs> buy some flowers, buy some chocolate, bring home a nice dinner. Get through the day. So one thing that we did say <laughs> on this that would be important is understanding the expectations of your spouse. Yes. Now this is this is a hard conversation to have. It is. Are we going to get in a fight? No, we're not going to get in a fight. <laughs> we did that last night, right before bed. Yeah, it wasn't a fight. No, it was a. It was a. It was just you. It were, was a revelation. It was a revelation because you. Th- okay, so this is this goes right into this because I have always said to you, just a card. It's just a card. It's all I need. Valentine's Day is not She's a big been deal lying for me. To me. Not that I've been lying. I've been trying to adjust my expectations that if you just get me a card, that's all I need. But in the back of my head, yes, I am secretly hoping that maybe something else will happen. Oh, me too. <laughs> so, setting it, so having a frank conversation, though, with your spouse is good because then you know what they're expecting. Yes, like you and know I expect a card. You expect a card. Yep. But... I think it'd be ridiculous if you told me, I expect to be at this restaurant at this time with these flowers. That would be ridiculous. That would be so unfair. And if, if, that were, if, if your spouse is coming at you like that, then in some way you need to say, it sounds like you want to plan the night, right? Yeah. Right? Because if you have all these expectations of, of at a certain restaurant at a certain time with a certain, then, then how about you plan the night so that we make sure it goes the way that you want it to? I think that would be fair. Yeah, I think that would be fair. I mean, if you're going to make that many demands on it. Right, so I guess, I guess the thing to do on Valentine's Day, I guess, is you need to communicate your needs. And then for you, for you men, especially, you need to do something outside of the norm. Yes. Like, you frequently give me flowers. Yeah. Probably at least once a month you get me flowers, at least, right? Well, it's probably every two weeks. Yeah. I mean, you do. If you notice that there's none on the counter and you're at the store, you grab me some. Like, you're, you're really good at flowers. But you have never given me flowers on Valentine's Day. No. And why is that? Because that's the norm. Because you don't like to be told you have to give me flowers. No, no. That's it's because I it? don't want to do, no, I don't want to do things that's normal on that day. So I have done other things on Valentine's Day, not just a card. Mm-hmm. I normally get really expensive chocolates from some place or, you know, something else, yeah. right? Besides just flowers. Right. But this year, I'll probably be getting flowers. Okay. Because we're, our flowers are... Yeah. Okay. So I can expect that with a card? At least. <laughs> I will do my best. That's right. Last year, you had been traveling, and you did bring me home some really, really good chocolates. Oh, they were really good. Yeah. They were excellent. They were excellent. Okay. So... So... um. So communicate. Communicating your expectations. Communicate your expectations. As long as they're realistic expectations. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, as we mentioned. And then also for you men, you've got to figure out a way to take those expectations and do something a little bit out of the ordinary. That will really woo your wife. It will. I mean, even though if your wife is saying it's no big deal, it's not a big deal holiday, don't get anything. Yeah, that's a total lie. Just go ahead and do just something. Just... So in this article, what it said is, we just want to know that you have put some thought into getting us something, whatever it is. Not the thought the day of, but a couple of days right. ahead of time. Yeah, it is. We just want to know that you went, you know what? She's important to me. She's special to me. I'm going to do this little thing. But yes, is it a lot of expectations? Oh, yeah. And disappointments? Yes, and we as women have to kind of get over that a little bit and ease up on our men just a little bit. I mean, St. Valentine just sent a card. He did. He did. Oh, shouldn't that be good enough? I always say that I just, that's all I need. <laughs> you didn't say that last night. <laughs> but hope for more. Okay, let's talk about some ideas for Valentine's Day. We've already talked about the four big ones. Cards, flowers, chocolate, jewelry. Yes. Um, so let's talk about some other things. What, what do you think would be a good Valentine's Day gift for you? Let's talk about you, and then we'll talk about some of the other ideas that we read. Hmm. I wasn't expecting this question. I know. That's why I threw it at you. Huh. I don't know. Maybe if you... you I, 
clothes are always a big win for me and I haven't been buying clothes lately. So if you bought, if you, you know, pick something out for me, that would Let's be. Let's talk awesome. about clothes lately. You haven't bought clothes since Christmas. Well, I haven't bought clothes in a long time because you bought me a couple things at Christmas. Well, that's true. Yeah. No, I haven't bought clothes in a long time. Okay. So clothes. Yes. This one can be tricky, guys. You got to know your wife's size. <laughs> and you do. You know my size. You know my taste. You do well I, with that. I do. But if you don't, don't even go there. But I mean, I love, I love clothes. I love clothes. Yep. I love shoes. So you know that that's always going to be a win for me. And, if, and that means that you Concert took- Concert tickets that, would be a good one. But that means you took some time to go to the store and look and choose something for me, right? That just yeah. means you took, yeah, yeah. took a minute. So things like where you took some time to think about it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a good one. Clothes is a good one for you. Concert tickets, maybe a concert. Yes. Uh, one of your favorite bands growing yep. up or whatever it was. Love concert tickets always. Maybe like, you know, we're going to have a night away together. That's, I mean, especially if you have little kids, that's, that would be super awesome. So arranging a babysitter, yep. all that would be. Yep. Or you can give your wife, um, you know, he, I'll watch the kids while you go get a massage, you know, on this day, anything like that. I think, I think the is key good. here is to make it simple. Yeah. Right. Sometimes us men, we get in our heads. I need this big, what was it? Big loving gesture. Mm -hmm. And, oh, I'm overwhelmed with how big it has to be. Right. Right. I, so I just, I just shut down and I end up buying a card the day of right. because I couldn't figure out how to, how to do some grand big, thing. Right. Some grand thing. So sometimes it's just things out of the ordinary. It can be simple, like a dinner out together. Yeah. Or I'm, I'll watch the kids during the day, maybe. Right. Take a day off work. Yeah. So they can go get a massage during the day when it's not crowded. Whatever, whatever uh, right. you can come up with. Yep. Those are all good suggestions. Um, what else? Um, handwritten cards. Handwritten. I always say the best cards you give me are the ones that you you printed up on the computer, like you wrote yourself. Those are the best. Well, I those those can be hard because the blank piece of paper is really difficult. it is, and so that's why I cherish those even more. But you you sh should, and what I found beneficial to you once I started getting in on by the third Valentine's Day, I understood cards are extremely important to you. Mm -hmm. So I always would get a card or I make a card, but I always wrote three or four sentences in there about you. Oh, yes, of course. Right. Yeah, if you buy me a card and just put love, Darren. That's, that's going nowhere. Yeah, that's going nowhere. Yeah, that's so why do, you, why do you still love your spouse? Yeah. Bring back an old memory of when you were dating yeah. or a happier time if you're not in a good place. Yep. I mean, those, those are good things to write. Something sweet. And you know what, women, do the same for your husband. Or get him, I mean, absolutely get him a card or make him a card. Absolutely. Well, and I think this goes to that attitude shift that you were talking about earlier. Women tend to get all their kids' cards because mm -hmm. they're watching out for the kids, but they're not putting the person that they should put first, which is the husband. Right. Right. Kids are easy to get for Valentine's Day. Get them some candy. Yeah. Right. You go to... Uh, Walgreens and get the cheap candy. Right. They're ecstatic. Right. Put the same thought um, that you expect that your husband to put in that you're putting in. Right. Right. And I think that'll go a long way. And we've talked about this before. Um, we've talked about like, hey, why don't you be in charge of, you know, Valentine's Day this year? Or we've taken turns being in charge of our anniversary. So that, because I don't think it should always fall on the man. And no, so I, I agree. We've done that because so I don't know if we mentioned this, but on Val if we have the kids on Valentine's Day, we do a family auction. Yeah, so let's talk about that as well yeah. because we've kind of taken the pressure off of Valentine's Day being the day right. of romance. I think I did that the wrong way because I learned last night that you still want that, which that's fine, but <laughs> not anymore. The kids have <laughs> expectations now, right? Because Every Valentine's Day, we actually have a food auction here at the house right. with all the kids. Yep. And last year, we were short some kids, so we borrowed some neighbor kids Yep. Um, in true survivor fashion. Yeah, we, we auction things off. They, we give them play money. Some things they see, some things they don't get to see. So sometimes they don't know what they're bidding on. There's always something really gross. Yep. Like, yeah. Yeah, things that we ate growing up that the kids would never eat. Yeah, spam or something gross like that. Spam, liver and onions. Yeah. Tongue. Yep. So, well, I never ate that growing up, just nope. FYI. 
<laughs> I know I did. But yeah, so we do a um, we do an auction now. If we because we wait until we have the kids. So if we don't have the kids on Valentine's Day, then you and I do go out. We do go out. We to do a, go out to a restaurant. Here, I guess here's the thing: just going out for a dinner doesn't cut you slack. For the men, it should that shouldn't be it. it shouldn't be card. Uh, well, really, do tell. No, I've been thinking about this since last night. Right, we've <laughs> got to do something, something above and beyond. Like I said before, it can be simple, but it has to be out of the ordinary. Oh. I can't wait to see what you do. Yeah, me too, because I have no clue. <laughs> we will see, and we will report back uh, next we, week if we I survive will. this we weekend. We will report back. All right, and then, yeah, so women, think about your husbands. Think, you know, get them a card. Get them something that you think that they would want. Some nice lingerie would be nice. Some nice lingerie. That's what, that's what most men want, right? And, Not, um, yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, that's what most men want. So just, yeah, you're simple creatures, right? You're simple creatures. Pretty and, simple. And we can, we can um, do some small things to make you guys happy too. Yeah. So, all right. So let's go forth for this Valentine's Day. All right, now, we'll see how we do. We're going to have a house full of people. We're going to have grandbabies here, which I'm super excited about. So Yeah, I don't know anything romantic is happening this weekend. Probably not this weekend. <laughs> But we will, we will push it, but it's going to be fun. We're going to have a fun time, but probably not so much on the romance front. All right. Um, we'll see. We'll report back next that's week. That's right. Okay. For our Lemonade Moment of the Week, we've got a great surprise. Yes, our daughter that's been on a mission for our church in New York City for the last 18 months returned home. It's been great having her home, and our house is getting really full really fast. Yeah, because everybody wants to come home and see her. And so, yeah, so. So, is. even though we're going to miss out on a romantic weekend for Valentine's Day, everyone's coming home to see uh, yep. Julianne, which is wonderful. We love having her home. Oh, we do. She's such a sweetheart. So it's well worth, uh, well worth the sacrifice we're going to have to take. That's right. And that is, that is a big, tall glass of lemonade, having Julianne home. If you like today's episode, give us five stars on iTunes, Spotify, Google. And head to Facebook and like us. And check out our blog at wheresthelemonade.org. Where you can leave questions and comments. And, but most of all, go out and make some lemonade. You betcha, baby. Bye.